Yeah. Now we will be patching in for all of the varsity girls games to the Canandaigua City School District YouTube page. And uh, not sure what we're doing with the boys yet. Still, you know, talking about it, negotiating, and trying to figure out. Look, here's HFL on the draw. They've got the ball at the 20 yard line. And again, beautiful multi use facility here. Only a few years old. What's it, about three years old? Is this three years old? Or four? Joe? Five? Maybe five? Okay. Five years old. 2016, I think. 2016. I trust you, Greg. Now, here's a shot of right hander thrown right out in front. But it goes wide left. And I believe that was uh, Paige Kidd who took that shot. So we've got 12 minutes left to play here in the uh, first half. HFL. This is, I don't know, this might be their first chance to get two shots off in a row. Loose ball off the front. And here's the finish. Nice job. Kind of caught uh, the Canadian goal out of position. Not, uh, who got that goal? I think it was 16. I'm giving it to Caroline Smith. Boy, it's just, you get a cluster out there in front and it's so difficult. But uh, uh, Mackenzie Taft kind of caught out of position there. And nice job oh, by right? HFL to scoop up the loose ball and then knock it down. Nice job of the quick shot. It's going to make it 11 to 3. <laughs> While still being an eight goal difference, 11 to 3 looks it's better really, really than 11 to 2. 11.49, here's the draw, it's up in the air, and it is going to be won by Canandaigua. It's going to be picked up by the Braves, I believe, that is Nola Weaver. She's got a goal, the eighth grader. She's going to bring it right down Main Street, passes it over to the GLE on the left side, and here's the cut. And we got a whiff on the shot, a little bit of a whiff on the shot by the Braves. 11.20, excuse me. 11.20 left to play, and after the uh, violation by Kane and the ball goes to the HFL Cougars. Now, another thing is the quick restarts, and, and, and I'm all for that. So what they're trying to do, fans, is they're trying to mask the fact that they don't have a, a, a shot clock, and they're trying to make the game go just a little faster, so the kind of Krause is going to scoop that up, and she's wearing the helmet, and again, another, uh, another the reason to uh, give her some respect. I, I, like I said, I respect the helmet. Here's the pass out the front with Laser. Laser off of the quick catch and shoot by the Braves. And that is going to be the lead that, that was number 20, Nova Weaver, the eighth grader. I've got that as being her second. So with 10 47 left to play in the first, Canandaigua now up 12 to 3. But to walk it back, the high school game does not have a shot clock, and, and we're back in for it. I mean, everybody, the, the majority of the people want to see the shot clock. So instead of implementing the shot clock as of now, I've been told it's going to be here in a couple of years. They just have to give schools time to come up with the money to implement the clock and then, you know, find people to run it. But here is uh, a nice pass out the front, a good finish. Oh, it's off the upright. I thought that went in. It was off the upright. Here's the rebound. Going to wheel around. And looks like uh, we're going to have a foul over there on the far side, just inside the eight. So we might have a free position here. And we are. We're going to have a free position the second on the day for Canada. Well, Boy, they should put the numbers instead of... You know where that CA is on the on the skirt? They should put a number there. I'm going to say that's number four, uh, Lily Shaw, the sophomore. 10.05 left to play here in the first half. She comes down, takes the shot, knocks it down. A good job by Lily Shaw. I've got her as being her second. So what they do is before on the violation, the foul, whatever, they would have to stop and allow the, the defense to reset and it would just take a lot of time off and it would kill the pace of the game. So what they've done is they made it so it's a quick restart. You don't have to wait for all that to happen. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's nice. It makes it a lot better from, from a, 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 a viewer's standpoint. 9.30 left to play, 14-3. First lacrosse game at 694 days. Nice job by McKenna, McKenna Cross to pop that up in the air and allow Number nine, the Booty Blazak, the freshman. <laughs> Man, I would love to have been a fly in the room 
when the Blaze X were coming up with names for their kids. Spinnaker and Boone. Nine minutes left to play here in the first. Now, I'm not throwing them under the bus. Nice turn around, left hander. It's going to sail high by just a couple of feet. And that shot goes by Lowell Shore, the seventh grader. Candidate with Dulles retain possession. Oh, nice job with the stick to knock it down. She goes down and gets it. Does. Uh, you see always uh, Caroline Smith, but a takeaway coming back the other way. Krause goes right down Main Street. That's a good one. Oh, so, Ken Krause is going to pick up at least a hat trick. She's got the hat trick with 8.25 left to play, and with the score being 15 to 3, the clock is now a running clock. And listen, you have to give this HFL team a lot of credit. Like I said, they've only got four substitutes over here on the side. Again, Coach Butko is telling me they have not had a complete team all season. Because I asked her, like I said, the varsity, they've got three games in already. And the JV, I asked her, you know, what their record is. But, uh, and she said, this is the first game. Oh, and here's a HFL on a, a, a draw control win. Very nice. And they're going to get it over on the left side. Hash mark, 740 left to play. Trim 15 to 3. Game time, 6 oh, 9 so we got a nice little drizzle there, you know, rained really hard for what, about a minute, and then it kind of gave up. So I checked the acting weather and they said it won't rain until 9 o'clock. Wrong. But that's okay. I mean, the weatherman, you're right 25% of the time and they say you're doing a good job. What a job to have. You can be wrong 75% of the time and still keep your job. Seven to actually still be considered. Well, let's look at major league hitters. Anybody who hits safely three out of ten times is considered a great hitter. And the greatest of the game hit safely four out of ten times. Ted Williams, Teddy Williams, right? This, doesn't he uh, have the highest uh, season batting average over 400 times? 645 left to play here in the first. Sent down inside the eight. Loose ball on the carpet. Picked up there nicely by uh, Smith. And with no shot clock, I would think here, with 6.25 left to play, HFL is going to do everything they can to retain possession. Eat as much time off of that clock as they can. Because realistically, in six minutes, they're not going to get 12 goals. So they're better off probably at this point just trying to keep the ball away from Canada to keep them from shooting. Oh, uh, now they try to pass it behind. I don't know if that, no, nope, they're not going to call it a deflection. I think they try to get it behind to uh, hang it out, the eighth grade. And here comes Canada in transition. And they have the ball in the right cross with a kind of cross. Cross with the cross. She is good in transition. Every team has somebody that they trust. Last time I remember, a couple of years ago, that was Clancy Rudy. Now she's doing her thing for the Albany Great Danes. It's a weird name for a college team, Great Danes, but Great Danes are huge. I've got a little, uh, I've got a little Chihuahua Dachshund mix. <laughs> And a great day will eat him up for dinner. Here's a save by Corey, but the rebound and another save. So Corey with two straight saves for HFL. Let's see if that cranks her up a little bit. Gets her home for just a little. Five minutes left to play. Nemo. Here's a ball in front of the And I'm going to cut Corey out of position. But Romano was able to pick up the loose ball and turn around and knock it down. I believe, Nemo, you know, you've got some stuff for me, bro. We're 440, 16 to 3. Hey, how much, Nemo, how much time does the goalie have? I'm talking to the uh, assistant coach of the girls of the cross program here. How much time does the goalie have before she has to get rid of the ball after a shot and she has it in the crease? Ten seconds. I, I, that's what I said. No, that's what I said, right? Yeah. Thanks, Nemo. You the man. You the man. 
So 10 seconds. All right, here we go. But what happens if she comes out of the crease? Is she open game? She's open game. Open game once she comes out of the crease. Candidate what? With another draw control. And uh, Dima, how's your draw control going to be for, uh, for the varsity game? Well, Spaz, we think we have one of the best draw girls in the country, so we okay. should be in pretty good shape, and we got some speed on the wings. Very nice. you got to have speed on the wings. There's no question about that. 3.45 left to play. As you know, Nemo, you always have an open uh, invitation to join me here on the mic. Uh, I love it, Spaz. Anytime I can be around a guy like you, it's oh, a good day for I me. love that, man. Nice job. Good day today. Look, now it's time to take some time off of the clock themselves. And here's, the, oh, and I think that was off the upright. Off the left side, upright. And the upright, I think, has made more saves than both of these goalies combined. Here today, man, oh, man. All right, 315 left to play. Where's the ball? Where is it? Sometimes it's hard to find out where it is. HFL with the restart right around the 10 yard line. I thought Demo was going to leave him some stuff. He was supposed to leave him some stuff. Trying to take away from Cannon Abel. Romano is going to pick it up. Nice feet down to the 20 yard line. Nice feet on the left wing, or the right wing, I should say, for Lily Shaw. But a little too hot to handle. A little too hot to handle, and the ball will go to HFL. Now let's see if the Cougs can transition into offense and throw another one in here before we get to the halftime break. On the left-hand side, down the left alley, right along the football numbers. Again, this, this facility, I have to say, this facility has stood up to how much activity it has seen in five years. All right, because they, they do sectionals here for other teams. FLCC soccer and lacrosse comes up here. Here's a nice hard shot by HFL on the bouncer. And I believe that is going to be Paige Kitt with her second. One, two, three, four. So that should make it 16 to four. Final two minutes still with the running clock. All right, everybody, you know, Randy's way. Randy is working. I was just 11 or 150, I should say. But as I was saying, this this facility has stood up, as I was saying, to all of the years that it has been put through over the last few years. So whoever uh, whoever built this whole facility here did a great job. Great job. When you're talking about keeping up with the Joneses, we're talking about this field being the Joneses. They used to play on exhibition field in the back, and that was uh, that was not the most blingy field you would see. This is just a beautiful facility. Final minute of play in the first half. So Cameron Abel going into the Syracuse weave. We see it in basketball regularly. We don't see it a lot, in my opinion, in lacrosse. But what it does is, it, it, is you run the ball around the top. Three or four different players. You run the ball around the top, the edge of the five, and here's the turnover. And it's going to be picked up by HFL, and they've got 40 seconds. They've got plenty of time to make their way down into the fan, but they're going to throw it away. They tried to get it down to uh, Matilda Lyle. Katie Adams tried to make the pass. It's a foot race over on the far side. And I believe it's going to come up with uh, Kenneth Krause. I think Kenneth Krause is going to pick it up. She's going to come over here to the hash marks over Daly Cooper. Cooper, right down Main Street. Now they're going to pick great ball handling by the Braves. And the trail check, she battles through that contact. Loose ball comes to Romano. She puts it down and is deflected by one of the defenders. For and 16 to 4 at the halftime break. So there you have it, fans. At the break, it's 16 to 4. Again, they were leading HFL. I'm going to step aside. Raise a little bit of revenue when we come back. We'll talk about it. You are listening to Kim Dewa Braves JV Lacrosse here on the station for Braves Nation, the home of high school sports. Cougars will be shooting on the Southern Bowl. Or defending the Southern Bowl and shooting on the Northern Bowl. So it looks like Corey once again in goal for Canandaigua and Taft in goal. Is that uh, Spencer Taft's sister? Mackenzie Taft? Uh, no. No, no, no. 
She has no brothers. She has Urlacher brothers because she spends a lot of time at her house. 20, 20, fresh 25 and then the draw is going to be won by Camden. It's going to be brought down by Kraus. She's swinging over to the right side. Now on the right alley along the numbers. Now down to the GLE. And they're just going to cycle it around to the other side. Bad X now with Romano. And over on the uh, far side. Right now at, on Main Street, and that's Estelle Huberly, who's over on the left wing. <laughs> over on the far side. Nice job knocking that down by HFL. Nice job knocking it down by Paige Kidd. Uh, Kenneth Krause was trying to pass it, and now she is doing the defending. Now they get it up along the right hand numbers, and they're bringing it across. They do get it across, but she loses the cradle. Ball is now on the carpet, it's loose. And it's going to be picked up by Canadaigua Huberly over on the far side. She draws a quick double, gets loose, and it's going to be picked up by HFL's Casey Adams. Adams with a goal for HFL. Now they had a nice opportunity at a breakaway, but the pass was just too strong, too high to be uh, handled, so it's going to go to Canadaigua. And then Canadaigua kind of does the same thing coming back the other way as Kraus trying to get it ahead to Huberly. It's going to end up throwing it away. It goes out of bounds, so that'll be a turnover. And go to each bird up. Yeah, go to the Cougs. 23-23 left to play. Game time, 6-25. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I, I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't say, Happy Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with you. Go ahead, Greg. Hit me. Hit me. Just pop me. No, it's all good. I love, the, I love the Star Wars. I do, too, but I go back to the trilogy. All the rest of them are crap. No, come on. The original trilogy. Man. Well, that, that is the greatest. The Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. That's that's it. Those are the only ones I watch. They lost me. At, what, what, what's the one with the same character, the tall guy in the ears? Oh. Uh, uh -huh. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, uh, no. to me. But they definitely, that was definitely a jump oh, shark moment for yeah. Star Wars. That's all right. Oh, uh, Jumbo, Jumbo. Jumbo. That's what it is. Jumbo or something or whatever. But, yeah, so annoying. One of the most annoying characters ever. 22 22 left to play. Ball is up in the air high. And it's going to be brought down by Pat, the goalie for Kim Dagwell. Now, she's going to bring it right out. She's not going to hang in the crease. And I'd like to see that. You know who else is an aggressive goalie? Quinn Tallman for Kim And I, I, again, haven't seen him play in two years. It's going to be fun to watch her back at it in the cage. So the ball, over the ball, almost a takeaway, but it's going to come up with Kim Dagwa. Sheridan is going to keep it. Right along the hash marks, left hand side to uh, Shaw. Shaw comes down, lets the left hand run and go, and it is good. So Shaw is going to pick up another one, and she's at least got a hat trick. So Canadago has at least two hat tricks with Krause and Shaw. So again, a lot of times, we were, sometimes we rely on the announcers to make the call. But sometimes the announcers, they stick their head in here and go, Spaz, man, did you see you got that goal? And then I have to say, oh, I was hoping you'd tell me. Here is, uh, with JV, they don't, uh, they don't do any announcing, so I'm kind of on my own here. Uh, a little McKenna Eckdahl, the freshman, is going to come in for Devin French, the sophomore for Canada. Well, running clock, 17 to 4, 21 to 10, left to play. The draw is up and it is going to come down to Canada. So any team that can win that many draws is going to go places. Just ask Victor when TD Irwin was, was doing his thing. And then he went on to Albany. Then he went on to Yale and finally ended up at Denver because otherwise he would have been playing this year because the Ivy League didn't do any sports this year. So we've got a free position off of the foul right down Main Street. And here is the shot. And it is good. That was uh, Louis Blazak. Louis Blazak, the freshman, knocks one down and makes it uh, eight to four. So we've got a little bit of uh, substitution here. Who do you bring in? No, we've, we've seen her before, the eighth grader. She comes in for uh, Lita Sheridan, the seventh grader. So Coach Northrop able to, you know, check out some of that depth that Kim Bagel has. Let's see if we'll see Mackenzie Mamoon 
in a door full of cute ridiculous. She's in ninth grade. She's dressed and ready to go, man. 1955 left to play in another draw for Canandaigua. But I think the most egregious, most egregious robbery of COVID-19 was T.D. Erland being robbed of his chance at the Tewarton Board. There's no doubt in my mind that he would have won the Tewarton Board, which is the best college lacrosse player in the country. There's no doubt in my mind. Greg, can you concur with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt he would have won the tour. He's not, he's not even on the list this season because, you know, of the transfer protocols, he was unable to immediately, you know, start the season with Denver. And uh, but I'll tell you what, man, best face-off guy on the face of the planet. I think that would play the game. But... Uh, they gave it. Who'd they give it to? Matt Rambo? I don't know. When he was I, a I, so, no, when he was a oh. sophomore uh, or a junior, I think they gave it to uh, or uh, yeah, whatever. I think Matt Rambo from Maryland won it that year, okay. and I think he got robbed. I think he got robbed because Rambo was a senior and Erwin was a junior. And as you know, many people in sports go, nope, give it to the. If you have to choose between the junior and the senior. A lot of times the senior gets it just because he's a senior. But uh, to me, that's the most egregious. But 18.30 left to play. Canada Day, well, uh, imposing their will, just doing whatever they want here against the Cougars of HFL. Hallett, Olivia Hallett, the freshman. And uh, a little bit of uh, contact there in the middle of the eight meter, and that should give Hallett a free position. So Hallett will get a... Is she going to get a free position? Oh, no, they're going to call an offensive foul. They called offensive against Canada. So they give the ball to HFL with 18 left in play. And the ball is taken right away. Nice check coming back for Canada. Well, bringing it down inside the eight meter. And the left-handed runner is good for Lola Weaver. So Lola Weaver has at least a hat trick herself now with 17 and 40 left to play. And, and again, we are what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Now you look out, and I only see one substitute. I don't know where the others went. Probably something a little too personal for me to discuss. If they just disappear from the sideline. But, the, oh, nope, they uh, traded them in. They did a little swap there, three for three. So they're now all four are together on the sideline here for Coach Bucka and HFL with 17-10 left to play in the first. And another win for Canada will come in the other way. Now they're going to bring it right down uh, Main Street. Like I said, halftime of the varsity game. Once again, I will be talking about all of, uh, I don't know about all of them, but a lot of former Canada players who are in tournament play in college. We'll talk about them. I'll tell you what, Lexi Bernicki, she just had a five-goal game. Number one, Niagara beat the front. Number two, Nazareth on Sunday. And, uh, man, five goal game for the big rig. And we do have a new goalie. So, Matty, uh, I should say, uh, Mackenzie Mamoon in goal now for Canada. Look, called it. That's a home in a second. Called it. 16 16 left to play. <laughs> In the second half, again, 225ers. So, Nemo down on the sideline, standing next to the longtime trainer here, Jeremy Herman. And then right next to him is well, Coach Rachel Northrup. And just standing there watching, having heard a word from my buddy, Coach Todd Moore. 15.40 left to play. Canada, lots of different goal scores. Looking good. Pass inside. Nice left-hander is good. So a really nice job there by Canada to move the ball well. The feed from Nola Weaver to Bailey Cooper, the seventh grader. She's now got a hat trick. Tell you what, this Canada defense they're going to need to step up because the uh, HFL varsity offense, they, uh, they score a lot of goals. 
I think they score, what do they score? An average of 15 per game. They scored 20 and 19. And then they only scored it was a four or five in their in their one loss. They lost their season opener to Penfield. They started their season with three homies, three home games. They lost the first one, then won the next two. Back at the draw, and it's going to be picked up nicely with one hand by Bowie Blazak. Now I wonder, Greg, is Bowie her legit name or Eliza. Her nickname? Eliza. Eliza. All right. Eliza. <clears throat> so it'll be interesting. I'm going to have to talk to Eric and see where they came up with Bowie. I want to know how they came up with Spinnaker. I think they just started calling her Bowie. I've been there since the beginning. I want to know how they came up with Spinnaker. Uh, That's Eric his given name, Salem. right? Yeah, uh, I Wolf believe, Salem, yeah, yeah, Spinnaker Blazak. He, he plays for uh, Canada and Boys of the Cross. Also a great skier. Great yes, skier. Uh, I believe the, uh, has won the last couple. Two times, yeah, won the last couple, section five. What is it, Nordic? Is that what he, Nordic? Slalom, giant slalom. slalom. Okay. Yeah. Nordic, I think, is the cross country. All I know is that dude can ski. He can ski. No doubt about it. 1350 left to play. Margaret, do you know how the Blazacks came up with uh, Spinnaker as a name? Have you ever? I've never heard Spinnaker. It's not a sailboat. It's what? It's a part of a sailboat. Okay. Eric loves sailing. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, all right. Uh, all right. So I'm told that he was named after a boat park. <laughs> I don't know. Eric, but... what are you thinking, man? What are you thinking? Oh, that's funny, man. That's awesome. Eric's a good guy. Is he still no, still guy. doing the mediation thing? Eric, I don't know. 13 13 left to play here. 6 36 is game time. Always do your best to beat your best. Okay. Coming into a line with the Braves field here. 13 05 left to play. So, Candidate, yeah. but now uh, in, in, in run some time off of the clock tonight. So I usually just kind of, well, what's the farthest kinda person can see the her in the dogs brain? in essence here. Can I see these, you know, right. and then what's the farthest person over here? Can I see So our next broadcast, as I said, is going to be at 7 30 tonight, tonight, tonight when Candidate will takes on HFL. HFL has managed to get three games in already. They're two and one. Candidate was first competitive game of the season. They, They've done, uh, they've done some scrimmages. Now they're ready to go. And as you may have heard Nemo say earlier, <laughs> he thinks they have one of the uh, one of the best draw control players in the game. And they do have a lot of speed on the wings. And you have to have a lot of that. And you say, why do you have to have speed on the wings? Because it's not like boys when they face off. When the boys face off, the ball stays pretty much on the ground. You know, when it comes off, it's kind of almost a rare thing. Whereas the girls, every single time it goes straight, it goes up in the air and you have to get through it. Here's the takeaway by HFL. Nice job by uh, Trubuskowitz. But they lose the handle and it's going to be picked up by Krause. Now Krause is going to pull it back right about the 25. She puts the brakes on and she is going to give it off to Louis Blazak. So in that, uh, that that weave, as we say, and, uh, definitely not as tight as the Syracuse Orange uh, weave, but here's a takeaway by HFL. The Orange losing a tough one to North Carolina in the ACC tournament. Well, they beat it to the GLE, and here's a look at it. Moving with a fantastic save. I mean, and that was right in her grill. That was right in her grill by uh, Manny Kreider. What a great season Red Jacket had. I did their first game of the season uh, against, uh, who did they play, Holly maybe? And they destroyed Holly 50 to nothing. And I said, you know what, fans? Red Jacket's not going to lose all year, and they did. Neither did Ken. They, they finished undefeated. And a lot of people, <laughs> they missed that game against Wilson. A lot of people were worried that they would make the sectionals. And, uh, they put a nice little open on the east right here at uh, Braves Field. We were unable to call that game. Because that was another one of those games where I was scheduled to be here. But uh, due to restrictions, Varsity Media 
due to spacing, would have been in my spot right here on the northern end of the press box. So I would have had to set up outside, and it was just far too inclement weather for me to concern myself with that. Ten minutes left to play. And let's see who's got the ball over here in the southern end zone. 9.50 clock continues to run. It is a running clock, so it will be HFL. Let's see if HFL can uh, transition into offense. They're going to bring it up the left-hand side, pass it over to the middle. They're going to bring it up the middle, and nice check. And they're going to end up losing it, and it's going to come up with, I believe that's uh, Jessica Andrews for Canandaigua. At least that looks like an eight. You know what? I'm going to pull out the binoculars. It was it Jessica Andrews. Yeah. Yeah, Marguerite, you got better. You got better eyes than I do. You got better eyes. Not than really. I do. Boy, that, that end, the southern end of the field, it is more difficult for me to see uh, when the lights are on, or, or when the lights are on, I should say. And I've I've probably called. You know what? I've probably called over the past five years. I've probably called a hundred games here. And. Uh, that's, that's a good thing to uh, check into how many exactly how many games I've called here. But Canada, as I said, is kind of I'm not going to call this stall mode because to me stall mode means you're up by one or two and you're just you know afraid to turn the ball. Over. That that's calling off the dogs. That's that's having 20 goals, beating the team 20 to four. And, uh, you know, kind of showing some respect, a little bit. HFL in transition, and he tried to get it down to Cridler. She can't handle it, but she does run it down before it goes out of bounds. So, with just four substitutes, you know, you can... Oh, and a nice <laughs> the ball got by HFL, and they're going to get one in. They're going to get one in, and I believe that was Paige Kidd, and she's got a hat trick for HFL with 750 left to play here in the second half, 20 to 5. And as I've said, when you, when you think to yourself, 20 to 5 isn't that much different from 20 to 4, when you look up at the scoreboard and you see that, it definitely looks better at 20 to 5 than it does at 20 to 5. I know it's only one goal. Canadawa has been dominant on the draw. Canadawa has always been strong at the draw here at Braves Field. Uh, names that come to mind: Natalie Gwynn, Clancy Rue. I call Clancy Rue Hoover, man. That girl. If I listen, if my life depends upon somebody getting one ground ball. My life depends on it. I'm going to Clancy Rudy. Clancy Rudy graduated uh, two years ago. She's a sophomore at Albany U. I think they have a plan. They, they have her marked as defense, but she also, I think she's won like 80 something dropping. Uh, so she's not the biggest. Man, she is very strong. But Dan Nagel's going to pick it up over on the far side with Olivia Hallett. <laughs> 6.25 left to play. Ball up top now at the edge of the eight. You know, it's been two years, Margaret. Which one is the fan, the eight meter or the 12 meter? Isn't the 12 meter the fan? Margaret's looking at me like, oh, I'm like, aren't you supposed to be doing a radio show? Why are you talking to me over here? 605 left to play. I'm saying, just say yes. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I believe yeah. the 12 meters the fan. We're going with that until somebody tells me different. 555 feet inside, shot wide left for Canada, but they backed it up nicely. When he comes like that, the binoculars come into play quite a bit. That was backed up nicely by uh, J.D. Taylor, the freshman for Canada. So stop and Jim play. And here comes the uh, HFL Cougars varsity team making their way over towards the uh, towards the bench. Like I said, I, I anticipate that varsity game going to be just a little bit closer. 
Seven to six, dating back to 2011. Cannon Davidoff owns a one game advantage. Dating back to 2011, but that includes the last two. Five minutes even. Both teams have sectionals pedigree. Both HFL and Cannon Davidoff reigning and defending sectionals champions of their respective classes. Coach Buckley coming down and encouraging her offense. Trying to get another look here at Mackenzie Maloon. Mackenzie, the freshman. Couple nice stops. They got one by her, though. Work a little bit of motion to caught. Here is Kid Harrison. Not to say it. She basically sent out an email where she was going to send that shot. She definitely telegraphed that. Uh, now, you can see some frustration on Mackenzie when she knows that her outlet pass was not a good one. She's very frustrated at herself. And it is going to go out of bounds over on the far side, but it does stay with the Braves. So luckily, blessedly, there for Kim Day, unfortunately for HFL. Oh, little love. Little squib on the pass, picked up by HFL. Here they come on the break, right inside. And the shot is going to go. Wide left. Shot goes wide left there. 340 left to play. That shot was taken by Matilda Lyle. Matilda Lyle. So fans, listen, just keep track of us on our social media, on our website. And that's where you can find out last up to the minute stuff. Here's a right hander by Kid. And Kid is going to get her fourth. So Paige Kidd knocks it down, good feed inside the eight meter, right in the hot spot. Let's see, maybe five, six yards away from the moon when she took that shot. Not a whole lot that Mackenzie was going to be able to do with that. So like I was saying, just pay attention to us on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, our website, chosenspotradio.com. And up to the, like I say, up to the minute stuff right there. So, not sure if we're, uh, when the next JV broadcast will be. It depends on, uh, you know, if anybody wants to pony up on the sponsorship, plain and simple. If you want, uh, you want to listen, the more support we get, the more games we can do. You know, cost, time. Uh, Jim Nipple from SE Video hanging out, waiting for his opportunity to get inside the box, man. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I wonder if he still drove, wonder if he drove his Camaro. He's got a beautiful yellow Camaro. I'm so jealous. Here's HFL at 15. Nice feed inside. Unable to handle it though was Katie Adams. So it's on the carpet. And just before Moody Blazak was going to pick it up, the official blows it of the whistle. I think that's going to be a free position for HFL, and it is. Free possession on the left hand side, a free position on the left hand side for Matilda Lyle. So, first time that Kenzie Mamoon has been tested from the eight. She comes right in, lets it go, and Mamoon gets a piece of it, turns it away. She did. She was strong in the goal area, too. How about that Cassidy King Jr.? The, uh, now she's not Cassidy King Jr. I'm saying she's a junior at Indianapolis, the Greyhounds, and they just, uh, they just won their conference, so they get a bid to the NCAA. Here's another turnaround, I believe. That was, I'm pretty sure that was, uh, Katie Adams. Katie Adams for HFL. Final minute of play, 20-7. 20 20-7. So in this game brought to you by an anonymous contribution. Is it 20 to 7 and 35 seconds left to play? Just a really good balanced effort from candidate with top to bottom. Multiple scorers. Very dominant at the draw. And they want another one here, and it's going to be run down and picked up by Samantha Lupton. 